welcome back. Guess what? This is going to be part two. Something or someone else decided for us. And I obviously it's not YouTube because I'm not on YouTube right now. So my phone must have a limit of how much I can record at one time. So let's pause since we had to come back to this. Grab our candle, our light. Just take a few gentle breaths. Turn inward. Notice what you're experiencing right now, your body, your mind, your feelings. Our focus on the flame. This is all about turning the light on, bringing what is or was unconscious beyond our awareness, unable to change if it's unconscious, Unable to take ownership of or responsibility for, heal, change, grow. Um, can't do any of that if it's still unconscious. So much of what we do on my YouTube channel is um, find tools to help us be more conscious. More compassionate with ourselves and others. Less judgmental. Raising our vibration. Very vibration, changing the channel in our minds. Shedding light on whatever needs more light. So, we're reading a chapter from Anthony DeMello's Awareness, The Perils and Opportunities of Reality. If you're watching this part two, hopefully you watched part one. And if not, go back and pick it up because we read most of the chapter on um, finding yourself and uh, we're actually at the very last paragraph and just before we um, paused ourselves and then lost the the last um, feed we um, he was talking about conditioning and um, how we can we can look at we could we can kind of take ourselves apart piece by piece and ask you know, what each sentence that we speak, where does it come from? Is that daddy talking or mommy or grandma or grandpa or whom? Where does that come from? Our, our conditioning in life, our pre-programming. And though it's uncomfortable to see that, that most, if not all of what comes from us came from this pre-programming. It came from these significant people in our lives that influenced us. They did their best, so we're not here to blame them or point fingers, judge them any more than we're here to judge ourselves. We're just here to become more aware and to um, adopt, to connect with our observer self that we've described as neutral and compassionate and present, able to be compassionately present to all of our parts without judging. So as we read this chapter... It's taken me days to get through it because it's been very uncomfortable for me. And we, again, we paused at a place where he asked us to stop and, and, and uh, take a minute to be aware uh, of what we were feeling in our body, what's going on in our mind, and, and what our emotional state was like. And we came back to it there. So let's pick up there. How about being aware of the blackboard, if your eyes are open, and the color of these walls and the material they're made of? So we thought maybe he's a professor and he was literally speaking about a blackboard behind him <laughs> in the days when we had those, when we were in the classroom and there were blackboards there. <laughs> How about being aware of my face and the reaction you have to this face of mine? Be aware of the reaction you have. Whatever the reaction to this face, uh, positive, negative, good, bad, indifferent, neutral, um, warm fuzzies, irritation. <laughs> because what we're reading, and maybe you don't want to go there, it's painful to awaken. <sighs> because you have a reaction whether you're aware of it or not. And it probably isn't your reaction, but one you were conditioned to have. And how about being aware of some of the things I just said? You may have to go back and watch part one today on awareness and finding yourself. Being aware of some of the things I just said, although that, that wouldn't be awareness because that's just memory now, if you're able to remember what we've already read. 
Be aware of your presence in this room. Say to yourself, I'm in this room. It's as if you were outside yourself looking at yourself. That's the observer self, observing that you are in this room. Notice a slightly different feeling than if you were looking at things in the room. Later we'll ask, I guess later in his book he's going to ask, but right now I'm going to ask, who is this person who is doing the looking? Who is this person that is doing the looking? I am looking at me. What's an I? What's me? For the time being, it's enough that I watch me. But if you find yourself condemning yourself or approving yourself, <laughs> don't stop the condemnation and don't stop the judgment or approval. Just watch it. Wow, I mentioned in part one, I will be creating a um, another couple of um, lots of videos. Obviously, this is just the beginning. We just started this journey together last week. I'll be creating a mindfulness um, exercise video, just on, just the exercise itself. I'll be creating a, a video on um, shadow characters, working with your shadow characters, getting in touch with your observer self, that part of you that's neutral and compassionate, and that's what he's describing right here. That part of you, that, that truth of who you are, you are the light of pure awareness. You're not your thoughts, your feelings, the sensations in your body. That's just stuff you're wired to experience. The observer self within you, that light of awareness, that compassion and neutrality, that's who you are. So don't stop the condemnation and don't stop the judgment or approval. Just watch it. I'm condemning me. I'm disapproving of me. I'm approving of me. Just look at it. Period. Don't try to change it. Don't say, oh, we were told not to do this. <laughs> Just observe what's going on. As I said to you before, self-observation means watching. There's a chapter in here I don't think I've shared with you yet titled Self-Observation. So if you haven't, I highly recommend this. Go get it. There was one copy left at my Barnes & Noble in Little Rock, and I, I've had it. But you can order it online. Share it with your, your loved ones and those you are struggling to find that compassion for. Don't try to change it. Don't say... Oh, we were told not to do this. Just observe what's going on. As I said to you before, self-observation means watching. Observing whatever is going on in you and around you as if it were happening to someone else. That's interesting. As if it were happening to someone else. I guess observation, since we're saying that you're not, you're not your thoughts, you're not your feelings... So the observer self in you, from that seat of neutrality, I call it my sacred witness, my compassionate observer, is observing what this human being, this human form is experiencing. I'm wired for thought. I'm wired for feeling. And my observer self is observing that as if I were observing someone else. As if I were observing, I call them my inner roommates or my shadow characters. I think I'm going to get on those two videos soon. If not today, I will share them with you very, very soon on uh, the mindfulness exercise, which is using some of that shadow character work. And it's using, it's teaching you how to be self-observant from the seat of compassion. And getting some distance between you and your shadow characters that we over-identify with at times. Anyway, again, happy 11-11. I hope you've opened a new a door to a new neural pathway in your brain and you've stepped through like a portal, a new level of higher consciousness where you judge yourself less and less and less every day 
where you have more and more compassion for you and for others. I love you. In Lakesh Alakim, I am you and you are me. Big love. Until next time.